Good morning, everyone, <clears throat> and thank you for joining us for FMT and Concur's presentation of Five Ways to Beat Finance Season. For the agenda today, we will be introducing our team, then Concur will walk through the five ways to beat finance season, as well as a demo, and then we'll end with a, a small Q&A session. My name is Lucas Darling, and I'm an account executive here at FMT Consultants, and I'm joined by Trevor Wolf and Bria Taylor from Concur, who will be guiding you through the webinar today. For those of you who aren't familiar, I'd like to just take a few moments to give you a brief overview of our company. Here at FMT, we opened up for business in 1995 and have successfully completed over 1,000 projects and have accumulated over 120 ERP clients spanning the U.S. and even into Canada. During this time, we've been able to establish ourselves as Southern California's leading provider of integrated solutions, and along with our 22 years of experience, we have grown to well over 80 team members who are both versed in functional and technical knowledge of all areas of, of ERP solutions. So we're we know your challenges and issues, and we're set to put you in a position to succeed in the future. And with the seamless transition to our customer care team, you'll have the ongoing su support to have a relationship with FMT and have success far beyond. The FMT way is really something you begin to understand once you engage and begin doing business with us. With the combination of talent, experience, and methodology, we're fully dedicated to the success of your company. We offer a wide array of services pertaining to ERP, CRM, SharePoint, Business Analytics, Power BI, Office 365, and a plethora of other solutions. In addition to our offerings, we have an entire department dedicated specifically to customer support, and these are 13 full-time senior consultants serving you from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. One of, the, one of the things that FMT really prides ourselves on is having extremely experienced consultants, and these consultants are versed in all kinds of backgrounds, industries, and systems. So you, we know we really understand your struggles and we wanna help you succeed. We are a Microsoft Gold partner, as well as a preferred partner for both Dell and NetSuite. We have been partnered for Microsoft for over 20 years and consult on a wide range of Microsoft products. We have six gold competencies, as well as a tier one cloud service provider. And because of our expertise in those spaces, we were really approached by both NetSuite and Dell to engage in a partnership, and we've had a great partnership for years now, and we will for years to come. Now I'm going to hand it over to Bria and Trevor, but before I do, if at any point during the presentation you have a question, feel free to type them into the comment box. We will be monitoring it during the entire presentation, and we'll answer any questions at the end. Thank you. Bria? Thanks, Lucas. So guys, as the end of the year approaches, tension around the office tends to rise, and teams are hustling to wrap up year-end reporting so they can actually enjoy the holidays. And finance departments can end up scrambling um, to account for employee expenses and last-minute invoices. So we're gonna take these next few minutes just to kind of discuss a little bit of the best ways to beat the finance season. Um, and we'll start with number one, minimize the number of steps. So if you take a moment today, um, December is here. Give your expense and AP process a thorough review. Look for areas of improvement and ways to reduce steps. One busy season process buster is the approval workflow stream. So be sure you know who is going to be out of the office and not available and to approve expenses and invoices in December. And getting a backup plan in place ahead of time can save headaches down the road. In fact, Streamlining your expense report and AP process makes it easier for your employees to follow, and it reduces the frustration and saves time and money. Start with the best business practice. If you're rifting through a stack of receipts or having to go back to submitting employees for information, it not only delays your finance team, but it also exposes your company to risk. Not to mention undocumented expenses can result in fines, legal fees, and revenue leakage. So how is the best issue to be resolved in this case? If you review your entire expense process from beginning to end, take the time to smooth out those bottlenecks and clarifying any areas of ambiguity. Ensure that every player involved understands their responsibility, whether they are submitting, approving, or doing the actual reimbursement. Um, you'll want to ensure the expense management process goes smoothly 
and rules are being followed to not only reduce errors, but also the risks of fraud. So whether you decide to set goals by department or create internal gamification, create a culture of accountability and get all your teams to work together toward a common objective. So taking this step now before the end of the year starts is a great proactive step. Make the move to an automated system. Are you still using a manual process to manage your expense reports and AP invoices? This is actually the, there are no better time but than the present to make this move to, to automating. If you think about the cost of implementing new spend management technology, it actually makes up for itself in the time and money saved. With an automated system comes the visibility your team needs to track their properly forecasting. So your finance team can get access to real time expense and um, data to actually needed to make strategic financial decisions. So with so many work and communication process going mobile to accommodate your employees conducting business outside the office, your current system should definitely adapt. And let's not forget about those road warriors. Using a mobile reporting system allows your travelers to submit their expenses on the road. For example, allowing for employees to photograph and submit receipts before they get back to the office decreases the chance of lost receipts and incompliant claims and increases the reimbursement time. It closes the expense cycle at an accelerated speed. So this also gives your finance team the ability to capture expense data anytime from anywhere. And by giving your, tool, your employees the tools to feel empowered, moving to an automated and mobile system not only saves them time, but it gives them the tools they need to complete their tasks with confidence. For an employee who has come off a week-long business trip, the thought of sifting through receipts and filling an expense report is overwhelming. And the feeling is mutual for the finance team member who has to review and approve the report, especially when it's one of many pouring at the end of the year. Why not make life happy all around by giving your employees a solution that will make expense reporting and approving faster? Happy employees leads to increased retention and better work engagement. Not to mention, your employees may give you a toast at your next holiday party. <laughs> and finally, it all starts with education. Before you can begin to update your company's spin process, you must first educate yourself. It goes beyond having a firm grasp on best practices to knowing how to implement them and lead your team through the change. So making the move to an automated to an automation system can actually seem intimidating, but it doesn't have to be when the proper technology is put into place. So we know you're dealing with the stress of closing the books and ensuring the bottom line numbers are inaccurate for or accurate for the new year. In fact, it's noted that December 18th is the busiest expense day of the year. So to prepare you for the new year, companies are looking for ways to improve how their money is being spent and are moving to an automated platform to do so. Our colleague Trevor will take us through the Tinker platform and show how you can implement these elements to provide visibility and control to you and your finance team when it comes to managing your company spend. Up to you, Trevor. And Trevor, I think you're actually on mute right now, so we can't quite nope. hear you. <laughs> I, I was, I apologize for that. So where Concur can help is the um, platform allows to manage that spend, kind of everything but payroll. Uh, so looking at vendor invoices, uh, travel, expense reports, all those areas where it, it can sometimes be difficult to maintain uh, that control over that spend. Um, Concur itself is about 24 years old. Uh, we have over 40,000 clients and 35 million users. And about 70% of our clients are, are smaller mid-sized businesses. Um, we have partnered with uh, a lot of companies out there to really make our platform more, more robust. And we can go, you know, we can do local support or we can be, you know, global. Depending on your needs, we can really focus on, on what's best for you. Um, and we have very high client satisfaction with over 98% of our clients staying with Concur. 
Hopefully your desk doesn't quite look like this, but I know at times when it's busy and there's a lot of paper coming in via invoices or expense reports, it can feel overwhelming. What Concur can do is really streamline that process. We can help with those vendor invoices, maintaining policies around travel, uh, helping route those expense reports and get those proper approvals. Um, and all of this is done on one platform, uh, allowing for visibility and integration into your organization, as well as into your financial systems, making it uh, much quicker to process uh, all of this uh, spend. So here's kind of the, the users that we are gonna look at today. Um, Brad is our traveler. Um, and expense filer. He's also going to be the first person to start the approval workflow for a, a vendor invoice. We'll have our manager that will be doing a lot of the approving, so reviewing those expenses and invoices. And then we'll look at it more from kind of the back end, uh, AP, accounting, admin kind of visibility. Um, Looking at the platform itself, uh, this is what you will see when you first log in. And depending on the user that you are, you will have these kind of core pieces up here, travel expense invoice, uh, managers will have an approval queue, um, and AP specialists will have a, a, a configuration access and um, reporting access. And they can determine who has that reporting. Generally, managers have it too. Um, the platform itself is uh, software as a service, so it's cloud-based, meaning anywhere you can get online, either via a, you know, a laptop or a desktop computer or a mobile device, you're gonna have access to Concur. So let's start with our vendor invoices. Um, we're gonna go through uh, PO-related and non-PO-related invoices. We'll bring the manager in to approve via the Concur mobile app so you can get an idea of what it looks like in mobile. And then we'll look at those back office. So visibility throughout the process and you know abilities to kind of validate and approve those final, uh, that kind of final review of those invoices. Uh, the platform itself for our vendor invoices does have the ability to generate purchase requests and issue POs. Um, and we can have a, an approval process for that, that PO process. Um, we can also import those POs if you already have a system that is generating uh, POs and you don't want to change that process, so we can bring those in. Uh, for today, where we're really going to focus on is capturing the invoices uh, approving those invoices. We'll show the matching. So whether the PO is generated in Concur or outside of Concur, we're gonna match that data uh, so that when they're approving those PO um, invoices, they're gonna have all that information in front of them. Um, we'll look at payment options uh, within Concur. And then we'll look at some of the kind of those uh, overall reporting. So now that you have all this data in Concur, there's a lot of visibility in through the reporting. So let's start with capturing. So people receive invoices in a lot of different ways, majority today being email and mail still. I still see a lot of, of those when I'm, when I'm working with clients. Um, and then uh, you still see a few fax or other types of electronic documents that people receive and we can use those through um, an, an import of electronic uh, invoices as well. The nice part about Concur is we can manage that entire front end for you. So that allows us, allows you to kind of offload that administrative tasks of, you know, scanning and sorting emails and all of that. So what we can do is we can set up a mailroom service. We can have a PO box that will receive your paper invoices. We can have an email alias set up that vendors can send directly to, or if you have an AP inbox, then you would um, have the ability to forward that into Concur. Once it comes in, it goes through an OCR, an optical character recognition. We will validate that the OCR did its job correctly and it's accurate, and then we'll route it out and so you can start your approval process. So let's take a look at that capture process and, and what it looks like. Um, so the screen we're looking at, uh, it's been, you know, 
scan and upload it into Concur if it's paper-based. If it's email, the email system has brought it in, open the email, open the invoice, and loaded it into Concur. And then the screen we're looking at is after it has gone through the optical character recognition. So with the OCR, it has brought in, you know, it's matched to vendor information that we have imported from your vendor master. Um, we've set up default expense types. Uh, the great thing about those expense types is we've mapped your geo coding to that expense type. So the geo coding is in concur. Um, we're going to pull in invoice number, dates, and PO numbers if there are POs involved. The system's also going to capture total amounts, that PO number, tax, and shipping and all, it will pull off all the data from the line item details. So the screen we're looking at is that verification screen. So if you have Concur managing that uh, capture of your invoices, someone on our team is gonna go in, look at the invoice, look at the details that were captured, and then verify that it's accurate. We'll also work on, with you on uh, routing these to the person that's going to start the approval process for the invoice. <clears throat> that can be attention to as it is on this invoice um, and, and assign it. Or if you have vendor owners or if it's a PO based one, you want it to go to the person that generated the purchase request, we can route it that way. So a lot of different rules here for getting it out. Really, we want to create that efficiency. Um, with this, if you want to keep the capture in-house, the great thing is we'll give you all those same tools. You'll have access to the OCR. You'll have access to email in, to an email alias. And you'll have access to the verification screen. So once it's all validated, everything's accurate, we're going to hit submit, and it's going to go off uh, to start that approval process. <clears throat> With that approval process, if it's a PO-based invoice, uh, we're going to match to that purchase order. Um, <clears throat> if it matches, great. We have a couple options there. If it's not, it's going to mark those exceptions and you're going to see those green checks or exclamation points if there is uh, a non-match. Uh, if it's matching and you'd like, we can, and it's PO based, it's already had the pre-approval on the front end, we can shoot it right to AP for a final review and then the ability to pay and receive that data through an accounting extract or uh, if you have a financial connector, it can put up post directly into your accounting software. <clears throat> but that's once it's fully approved. If you'd like, you can route it to uh, the, someone to approve it first. Maybe you want to have a review. The person that ordered wants to look at it and make sure everything's good. Uh, they can, you can do that. Now let's take a look if there's an exception. It can go to the person to generate that purchase order. They can review it and manage that exception. Whether that means vendor's gonna send a new invoice because it's inaccurate or someone needs to adjust the PO, uh, that can be done. And then from there, depending, it'll go through the approval workflow if there is one or it can flow directly to the AP specialist once that exception has been managed. <clears throat> and the great part about having that PO data in Concur, we can uh, check on, you can run reports to check on the balances. So it gives you visibility into the spend and it gives you visibility into future spend because you know you have that open PO, you have a balance remaining, you're going to continue to receive invoices against it and you can, you know, you can plan for the future spend. Looking at a non-PO invoice, um, this one can flow through either from the invoice owner to the manager to the AP specialist or if you'd like, you can go to department managers. Uh, or you know, department directors, we can really get very granular and very complex with the uh, workflows if necessary. We can also have threshold approvers in there. If it's over a certain dollar amount, you need specific approvals for those, uh, we can build those out as well. So now let's get in and take a look at that first step. So Brad, our first person in the approval uh, workflow is gonna have, uh, uh, this screen. He's going to get an email notification and a push notification if he's using his mobile device that he has an invoice that he needs to go in and approve. He's going to be able to simply go in and see the scanned image, all that header information, as well as line item details. Um, 
With that, if he needs to get a little more granular on the coding, he's going to have that ability to do that. Um, he can go in and distribute either at the line item level or at, for the entire invoice. Um, here, he has some favorites set up already, which makes that distribution function much quicker. Or he could simply go in there and add distribution lines and do it one at a time. Since he has these favorites in here, he's doing it by department and activity. Um, and we also have you know, company and division in there. And that's gonna build out that coding, as you can see on the right-hand side. Once everything looks good, he'll click on save, and now that distribution is in place. And on that approval workflow that we saw just a moment ago, you saw those department managers. So if you'd like, these distributions can drive the uh, approval workflow from here and go off to each uh, department manager for approvals. Uh, Everything looks good to Brad. He's gonna go ahead and hit submit. And now it will continue through the approval process. Um, the next step in our approval workflow is to his manager, Maggie. She's gonna get that push notification. She's out on business travel. Uh, it's a little difficult to log in to her laptop at the time. Doesn't have to slow her down. She's gonna be able to see within her approval queue on the mobile app, click on that invoice, have all that line item detail. Any comments that were left on there, she'll be able to see those. Any of those distributions, she can verify that they're all accurate, as well as any of those images that have been attached. So really, uh, full functionality here on the Concur mobile app to allow her to make a good decision whether this should be approved or sent back. Uh, in this case, it looks good. She's going to approve it. On the back end, if you wanna see how performance it is, if you are having any bottlenecks or slowdowns on the approvals, you can run reports to see who's taking the longest to approve these invoices and, and maybe use it as a teachable moment. Uh, I work with a lot of, of folks on the, on the invoice side and they generally know who is causing those slowdowns, but it's nice to have the data there to, to have the, the facts behind it. So now it's gone through to the manager and now it's gonna stop at our, our kind of our last step here in AP. Um, this uh, person, they have a little bit more visibility. Uh, the end user and, and the approvers, they can see invoices that they've, you know, either touched or approved. They can, they can go and see what the status is and, and search those past invoices they've looked at. Uh, AP or the processor can see all the invoices in the system, so not just the ones assigned to them. That gives them visibility into uh, who the invoices are assigned to, what the approval status is. Um, they can search for specific things. Say you have an employee that's out sick. You want to go in and see what's assigned to them and either approve it through or assign it to someone else to, uh, to approve it. Uh, you can set up delegates, but if you know someone is out unexpectedly, they may not have an, a delegate approver uh, assigned. So this would give you that ability to go in and see those. Or if you're having a audit and you need to go in and pull some specific invoices, you can search by uh, invoice number or um, vendor. So a lot of uh, uh, options there. But you can also uh, build queries to see uh, bigger groups of invoices, whether they're, you know, current month pending the processor or where are they in the approval process, you can do that. So we're looking at one that is in the counting review. So once the AP person approves this, it's going to be ready for extraction over to your uh, accounting software. So you want to really make sure everything is accurate. You're going to look at that coding and, and all of the information in here. You can see the invoice image as well. Um, and you can update or review the distributions. You can see the comments that have been added. You'll also be able to see the audit trail. So who approved it? Who made changes to this invoice? And this is going to stay with the invoice uh, in Concur. So if there is an audit, they can see you know, what occurred with this. And with this, all of these invoices will stay in Concur for a minimum of seven years, be IRS compliant. But we have been around, this product's been around about 12 years and we've never purged any data. So you can even have a history longer than that. From here, everything looks good for our AP manager. They're gonna approve this and then it's gonna be ready for extraction. Um, 
great thing about having all this data in Concur being captured and having that visibility, you can report on it. You're doing your end of month of accruals, you wanna see what's outstanding, you can go and see what invoices are still out there and, and you know those total amounts, making that job much easier. And there's a lot of great uh, reports in Concur. So here's a you know an invoice uh, dashboard that we have, a lot of great kind of um, spend information here, and you can dig down in it. So all of these little uh, papers, if you hit that da drop down, there's going to be additional um, reports that you can run to really get the the specifics on these these reports. Uh, looking at kind of an overview, you want to look at trends and spend overall. You're going to be able to, you know, have this information available at your fingertips. Looking at payment options, if you'd like to have kind of a one-stop, you want to be able to pay out of Concur as well, we can do check, ACH, and credit card vouchers. Uh, the only one that has any cost is our, our check functionality, and, and that's just to cover check stock. Um, printing, envelopes, postage, all of that. And these will come directly, this will be your check stock, it'll come directly out of, of your account. Um, we'll send off remittance information and everything to the, to the vendor. We can also do ACH payments. Um, these would be uh, direct deposits into the vendor's account. Um, they will get remittance information via email as well as through the bank. And the credit card payments, this allows for um, uh, making payments if you have a credit card on file. So, you know, pay invoice number for this amount ending with card ending in, and, and then they could charge your account. Uh, so as, as a review, it's been all within Concur. We've been able to uh, review, approve, and have visibility into the entire process uh, all in Concur for those vendor invoices. So really streamlines that process and, and makes that, that overall visibility really great for that, uh, for that product. Next, let's take a look at travel. So we've managed our vendor invoices. Now we want to look at travel. And then also we'll go into expense reporting and approvals. Um, on the travel, the great thing is you can have a one-stop for being able to manage it. Uh, book car, flight, hotel. Um, company policies built into the tool. So as they're choosing what is uh, best for their trip, they'll know whether they're in or out of policy. And then all of that data will flow into their expense reporting software here in Concur and allow them to build out the report. Um, we'll also have some um, basic duty of care. So the ability to see where all your travelers are. So let's take a look at this. Back to our home screen. So this is at the end user. And right from that home screen, we're gonna have our trip search. Uh, Brad's gonna go in, he's gonna put in his specific details about when he needs to travel and where to. He's gonna be able to choose a, a car. Um, you can start integrating your travel policy here. Maybe you have groups of employees that have different um, options that are available to them and you wanna make sure that they're making a good choice. Um, in this case, Maybe Brad only has access to an intermediate car and below. Um, when I book for Concur, when I go on, on business travel, that's what I'm limited to. I know if I was up the food chain a little bit higher, maybe an executive, they have a little more choice. They can have you know, full-size sedans or SUVs. So a great way to kind of start managing that spend before it occurs. And then for hotels. Um, you can search you know, around airport address reference. Great thing is all of this is gonna be very similar process to anyone that's ever booked online. The enhancement is it's integrated with their expense reporting and they have uh, the ability to see whether they're in or out of policy. So let's take a look at that. We've got our results for our flight here and I've got a few different options and I can see there's some exclamation points there so I know something's up. Uh, with that, the top one's gonna to be in policy. So I have a basic policy set up of lowest cost fare plus 25% in policy. 25 to 50% is this middle one. So Brad can still pick this, but he's going to have to put a reason why he chose this. And as it goes through, manager would be notified that it was you know, slightly out of policy. Um, 
but still okay, just has a reason why. The bottom one is gonna require an approval from a manager. So if Brad picked that one, he's gonna to have to put a reason why. Um, it will go, it won't allow him to purchase the tickets at, the, at this time, it will go to his manager for approval. He can also do these functions in the Concur mobile app. So he can book, he can put in all those specifics around where and when he's traveling, select his airfare, hotel, and car. So the, the mobile app has this complete functionality included. Um, taking a look at if he had selected a out of policy um, option while booking, this is what the manager is gonna see. They're gonna get an email notification or push notification that there's an approval awaiting. And in this case, it's an approval to purchase the ticket for a flight that was out of policy. He put his comments in there that it's needed that flight to make it to a meeting with a, a client. Um, and uh, the manager can then determine whether they want to approve or reject this. If they approve it, it will purchase the tickets at that time. If they reject it, they can add comments as to why. Maybe they saw uh, three other flights at the exact same time that were in policy. With this, all this data in here, you're gonna be able to see people that are um, violating the policies and, and maybe you can use it as a, 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 you know, a chance to review the travel policy with these employees and help them make better choices. Um, with that, Brad just decided to pick one that's in policy uh, and maybe it's because he has frequent flyer programs with Delta. He's gonna be able to track those in Concur and continue to get his points. Um, he can then choose seats that he wants uh, within his profile in Concur where he's put in his frequent flyers. He can also have preferences. Maybe he prefers an aisle seat. It's gonna try and assign it to him to an aisle seat. If that's not available, he could go in and look and see where he's assigned and, and choose something different. And then credit cards. So with this, um, whether you have corporate cards that are loaded in here, and that's how travelers pay, or personal cards or ghost cards, we can help maintain that spend and make sure that people are, are using the correct cards to pay. Uh, we reserve that car on the front, so it's gonna automatically reserve my car for me. And that's done, it's gonna take me to my hotel search. Um, I choose just around the downtown location in Los Angeles. So it's just showing me locations around there. If you had maybe different office locations and wanted to search around that, you can have those pre-populated in there as well. <clears throat> so looking at the results, we do have a program called eReceipts. And what we've done is gone out and um, built out this around being able to get that data pulled into Concur without having to capture it manually. So in the case of a hotel, it'll attach the hotel folio to the line item when they build their expense report right into Concur without them having to do anything, which is fantastic. And we've got about 80% compliance with the hotels and hotel chains out there. Um, and looking at uh, Commercial airlines, we have 100% participation, and then all of the major uh, rental cars also have that e-receipt enabled. So we're looking back at our hotel search, same as with uh, when we were looking at the uh, av options available on the airfare, you're also gonna know whether you're in or out of policy when booking a hotel as well. Uh, so now we've got our flight, We've got our hotel, we've got our car all set, and now we can purchase those tickets. So we, we are gonna do that, and we'll get our notification that everything was great. I know that I, my trip complies with, uh, with my policy, so I am good to go. So here at Concur, we understand that it's extremely difficult to get 100% compliance uh, whether it's people going to conferences and having to book through those conference portals or occasionally have those lone wolf types that like to book outside of Concur Travel because they have specific things. Uh, we have a product for that called TripLink, which allows uh, you to still capture all of that travel data so you can still report on all of it. 
And we also have suppliers that are on this and we're bringing in more every day. So if someone goes directly to um, you know, a Starwood Hotel or a Marriott or something like that, they are gonna get that data automatically flowing into Concur. And included, you get um, TripIt Pro. So with that, it, it allows it much easier to travel. It's gonna bring in all that itinerary data that you've uh, brought into Concur right into TripIt Pro. You're not gonna have to have those printouts or searching through emails trying to find your information. TripIt Pro is gonna give that to you all in one place. It's also gonna give you reminders whether you're, it's time to check in or if there's a cancellation or a change to your flight, you're gonna get that information right on your mobile device. And you get TripIt for Teams, which is a great way to be able to organize everyone, see where they're traveling, when they're traveling, and have that uh, availability for employees to collaborate when they're going to travel together, or have that duty of care for the administrators to see kind of where anyone is in case something happened in that area. So for Brad, he's good. He knows that he made great decisions on what he booked. It's going to uh, be uh, compliant to policy, and all of that data is going to flow right into uh, Concur for the expense reporting. So let's take a look at building that expense report. Um, Concur makes it easy to capture receipts on the go, either through our Expensit OCR app or through the Concur mobile app. Um, and you can cre create expenses uh, very easily from that expense report. Um, and, and managing those receipts, I know can be difficult in a manual process. Um, we've all had similar feelings like this, old George Costanza with his wallet full of receipts. Um, it's easy to lose them, it's easy to, for them to be damaged, and you know you can't read them anymore. So hopefully you don't ever run into that experience, but with Concur, we have Expensit, which is our OCR-enabled app that allows you to capture the data right off of it, and it will create an expense line item for you. With that, it's gonna, you're gonna take that picture, and it's gonna easily read the data off of the receipt. So whether you're using a corporate credit card feeding into Concur or you're using you know, a personal card, um, it's gonna capture that data. You can take a picture either of a single receipt or both if you want the itemized receipt and the tip receipt. Uh, you can take both at the same time as this example and it's gonna pull that data in, it's gonna create that line item and be an available expense in, in uh, Brad's queue of expenses to build out his expense report. Um, as you can see, there's the two different ones. One is the credit card data, and the other is the expensive data with the image of the ex, uh, receipt attached. And using both those sources, it's gonna fill out the expense line item. And those charges, uh, will flow right in. In this case, you can see all of the, com the corporate card charges coming in. And you can go in and look at recent activity. Um, great thing about having those corporate cards feeding into Concur is you can see all of it in there. So you can run reports like this where they've used the card, they've assigned some of them to a, a report. So that report's going through, it's having visibility, you know, as the approval workflow, it's fully approved. But sometimes those uh, uh, charges sit in someone's queue and they haven't put them on a report. You can still see that data. So making that reconciliation of the corporate card much easier. So Brad's ready to start his expense report. He's back from his trip. He can go into his uh, trip log and, and easily just click on that expense button and generate his expense report. So it's gonna pull in everything from e-receipts, itinerary data, corporate card charges, expense it, uh, line items, uh, all in there. So 90% of his expense report is built out. Um, with that, you're gonna have those e-receipts from the airline, from the uh, rental car, and the big one from the hotel, which nobody likes to build out those itemizations, uh, it's gonna itemize that, that line item for you with all the taxes and, and anything else in there. In this case, uh, Brad had a couple mini bar or movie charges. Those are out of company policy, they're gonna be flagged. Brad's already gone in, or you can build the system to automatically remove those and mark those as personal charges. 
but you can have other rules in place. In this case, you have specific fields that are required. You can have, you know, those exceptions show up. I can't submit my report until I've managed my exceptions. In this case, I got to fill in my business purpose, um, uh, what I was doing in the area, who I was meeting with, why I had, where I had this expensive meal. Um, I can mark whether it's billable or non-billable. And I can put the client information in here. So those cost centers that you're tracking in your accounting software, we can bring that data into Concur and they can have the option to uh, mark that. If they need to do maybe more than just one client for you know, an airfare hotel, they're meeting with multiple clients, you have the ability to allocate those costs against maybe, in this case, multiple departments. But if you wanted to do it against multiple clients, you know, these cost centers can be specific to what's important to you. And you can break it out by either percentage or dollar amounts. Um, in this case, for my business meals, I require you to put in attendees. So I can go in um, and either add a new attendee from scratch, I can see attendee groups, uh, that maybe I, you know, if it's an employee meal, or if it's a client meal, I have some that I've met with in the past, or I can add new ones. Um, I can also have favorites in there. Pick the people that I met with, add them to that uh, attendee group, and now it's going to split those costs out. With that, you can then track that spend. So if you have that client project spend and you want to see how much is being spent on the, that client project, you can build out reports around that. So now Brad has a few more expenses that he wants to add to his expense report. Maybe it's all the ones that are in his queue. He can go ahead and check box those and automatically move those over to his expense report. From here, you can put in specific comments and be able to see it. Um, again, like we saw the accruals on the invoice side, now you can accrue for all those expenses out there as well. So having that visibility can make that end of month process much easier. Um, we can manage personal car mileage. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I'm gonna show the one that's included right here. So we have a mileage calculator. You can integrate it with Google Maps. They can go in, put the address where they're traveling to, in this case, home to the airport. I need to deduct my com normal commute to work. Um, and then it will give me my actual miles that are reimbursable. Um, and the rate is built in there. So whether you're using IRS rates or your own company rates, you can have that information in there. The other option is we do have a new uh, extended service called Drive, which allows for GPS tracking that you can enable in your Concur mobile app. You can either do a one-time trip, just go ahead, I'm, do, I'm starting it, or you can set up, uh, maybe you do a lot of driving all day. You wanna set from between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., uh, track my driving, and it'll build out line items for all the trips you go on during that time. So now my expense report is done. Uh, Brad can go ahead and submit his expense report. So extremely quick, because a lot of that data is already in there, Brad can spend time on his more core functions instead of hours on building out an expense report. And he's happy with that. It's made it extremely simple for him. And now we can go on and take a look at those approvals. Um, with this, we'll look at the manager's functionalities, being able to approve those, as well as uh, going through AP for those final approvals. And the approval expense workflows can, can be as simple or as complex as necessary. So you can have it go from you know, expense to manager to AP and accounting, or you can have it break out and go through a cost object workflow via those allocations that were done, or if those thresholds for the large expense reports, uh, they can go to a threshold approver like a CFO. Um, and then just like the uh, functions at the end, once it's fully approved, you'll have the options of being able to pay out of Concur or uh, out of your normal process, maybe payroll, uh, but all that data is gonna flow across to your accounting software. Uh, manager is gonna get an email notification that they have a pending approval. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, they can either go in 
via maybe a mobile device or they could go to the web UI. Uh, looking at it in the web, you're gonna have an approval queue for those people that, that have approval rights and they can jump in there and easily see what's going on. So similar view to what we saw in creating the expense report, here the manager's gonna go in and, and review specific you know, line items, um, as well as see any exceptions and see why those exceptions are on that expense report. Um, in this case, uh, we can see the image of the invoice. You can either hover over or click on that. You can see the credit card transaction information, and you can also see any um, comments that have been made about this specific line item. Um, in this case, this one's you know over normal costs for for that type of expense. In this case, they needed to buy a, a replacement laptop. Um, and then looking at this, I can also hover over and see that attendee information. Looking at that one, uh, you were out celebrating because you signed a large deal with a new client, so that's why this uh, uh, meal was a little bit over normal costs. Um, but we also forgot to attach the receipt to this, and that's required. So I'm okay with the amount, but I do need to click capture that receipt. So I'm gonna send back this line item to the employee. Now everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and approve this and now it will continue through. But I'm gonna go in and put my comments as to why I'm sending back that one line item. Great things for the department manager. They're gonna be able to run reports on the employees that they are, are managing and be able to see what that spend looks like. Um, with that, they can then also dive in and see what's driving that data or run different reports around the spend. And they can also see how their employees are doing against policy. So if they have a, a, a employee that's you know spending a, quite a bit out of policy, uh, they're gonna have visibility into that. And again, with these dropdowns, they can run different types of reports here as well. Nice thing for uh, kind of the back office, looking at those key performance indicators. If you wanna see why there's been some slowdowns, you're gonna be able to see those manager approval times and who's maybe taking the longest to do it. So now we're gonna take a look at it from that back office visibility. So in this case, you know, AP manager, AP controller, those types of functions that need to have visibility into all the spend out there, uh, they're gonna be able to log in and see those expense reports out there. Um, they'll also be able to do that final approver when they're, uh, approval when they're in that accounting review stat status. But then go in and do more granular searches as well um, and create queries around specific maybe departments and, and looking at those different expense reports and what's out there. Um, once they're in one of the uh, expense reports, uh, they're going to do a similar review. Maybe they're going to look at exceptions, also look at coding to make sure that it's going to post correctly into their accounting software. Uh, but in this case, everything looks good. We're going to approve it. Um, that is just a really simple way to manage those approvals and also have visibility into all those approvals. So really what we've done here is made it easy to manage that entire process, vendor invoices, travel, expense, approvals. With that, you're gonna have visibility and integration into your software, accounting software. So there's no more you know, keying that data into your accounting software. We have quite a few integration options, whether it's uh, an accounting extract file, uh, FTP services, we have APIs available f uh, through web services, and we also have a lot of pre-built connectors to help transfer that data between both systems. So depending on your needs, uh, Concur is there to help you out with that. So again, for the AP person, accounting person, it's really all about you know having that control to make payments and have visibility. Um, and integrate that data into their uh, software. Really just a seamless uh, platform to help you with manage these processes. So again, we covered that invoice, travel, expense, approvals, 
all on one platform with uh, complete visibility and seamless integration into it. So now I know we have a little bit of time left and we can jump in to see if there are any questions. So I'll pass it back. Yep, thanks Trevor, appreciate that. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions at this point, um, but I do want to thank you know Trevor and Bria for that presentation. It, it was very well done. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And if you do have any further questions, we will be following up with all the attendees. So feel free to ask at that time. Uh, we truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. And we hope to see you at all our future events. And have a great day.